preaches about equality. Mm. Right? We've talked about a few things which mm. address inequality, right? So as a global community, we need to think about what are we going to do about that? How does that conversation mm. evolve? And how yeah. do we get to a place of actually building equality where women are seen with the same dignity and respect as men and given yeah. voices in the same way too, yeah. right? Yeah. Totally. Um, and in situations like this, where there is assault, where there is abuse, to not blame the woman. And that has happened far too many times that I'm aware of. I know, I think every single woman that I know in my life has a story of some sort of assault or abuse. Mm -hmm. And that should send shivers down your spine. Like for yeah. everybody who's yeah. out there, it's not okay. And I guarantee you, every single woman that you know will also have a similar experience right where they're going to be silenced because mm. there's not enough support and mm. this is the moment of change this is the yeah. space that we now say hey yeah. we're going to talk about this together we're going to yeah. open a space and we're going to try to build each other up and create the infrastructure that we would have wanted to have yeah and i'm i'm really honored to be a part of Core Voices with yeah. you, Janan, because I, I know there's like so many things that we've talked about and, yeah. oh, we need to we need to have this conversation in a public space. Yeah. There's a lot of value behind it as well. Yeah. But this is, this is like a great first step for us to be yeah. able to talk about these things. And yeah. it's not just women. So I'm not restricting this, that I want women to come forward because you rightfully mentioned that abuse mm -hmm. is something that has happened across both genders. Yeah. And there have been, I'm not blaming Gurdwari, but mm. there have been countless cases that I am aware of where mm. families have come forward to the committees, mm. but nothing's ever been done. Mm. The perpetrators are actually protected by the institution. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Because if our space to develop for Sikhi isn't safe, mm. then where do we speak, where do we feed our spiritual hunger? Where do we go to to make that connection with Guru when that space is no longer safe, right? Yeah, yeah. So and that was my little rant. I needed to to get that. Yeah, no, of course. And I, I I see that as you as you mentioned nowadays because we are more disseminated in the world. Even though you, any person can have a this background or that background culture, we're still living in societies that are mixed. Like meaning we're living in. Um, Societies that have, for example, I live in Canada, like I literally have access to any ethnicity and, you know, culture or whatever. Um, the spaces have been opening, like right. the spaces of, of, of sharing things have been opening by other, for example, I know other institutions of uh, course and <laughs> other institutions like Sikh, Sikh Family Center that help right. people. Uh, in situations of danger and stuff like that. And they do workshops, they do, uh, you know, they talk to people about it. They go to Gurdwara and talk about it. In the mm -hmm. UK, there's a huge movement about l teaching the girls how to protect themselves, how to uh, not fall from this or that person trying to snatch them or whatever. So mm -hmm. I feel this is happening. This is happening not only with us opening this space, but it has been happening in other communities at the same time or even before us. And I think it's time. And it's time also because we as Sikh are becoming also a multicultural community. There are yeah. so many converted Sikhs at that now, like around the world, who come from different paths. You can say yoga paths or uh, they come because of themselves or whatever. But we are getting more mixed. Like if you... When I was in Miami, I could see my Gurdwara Sikhs, like, yeah, mostly Punjabi, but like from other places too. Like I saw an Asian person and then I have seen uh, Latin, other Latin Sikhs like me. Um, so many things doesn't make sense to us because it's not, it doesn't have to do with Sikh. It has to do with culture. Right. And, mm -hmm. and we must, and we must like understand that Sikhi is being uh, disseminated everywhere. And this hush hush culture does not belong to Siki. Literally, the first thing mm -hmm. I'm going to say is just talk when you see something wrong. Absolutely. Act and when you see something wrong. Why, that, that's why you have Kirpan on you. Kirpan is meant to be your reminder of you are a servant of society. You are a servant of, you need to make sure everybody is okay. Mm -hmm. It's just not a piece of metal you're carrying around, it has mm -hmm. a meaning. 
Um, yeah, and I am I am actually really really happy that we have at least put that little grain in the whole pile of uh, of things that we are doing to make our community better. Because mm -hmm. at the end of what we want, we want everybody to feel welcome and nice and safe and you know practice whatever we were given to practice so Absolutely. and um i i'm just like taking in everything that you were saying and i i agree with you that it's it's important to to bring it all together and this is why we created core voices and yeah. not it is written core voices but it's the core voice like the voice inside of you that has been silenced or you know has been vulnerable has been afraid whatever it is that's causing you to not speak um check out corevoices.org and if it's something that you want to support you know please join forces with us and help us to uplift each other so that we can yeah. break this culture of shame and silence and actually start to have healthy conversations mm. and through problems like we should be doing right um and absolutely good John and we're we're a warrior race it's not that we're made to be timid and shy and blend in with the crowd. The reason we have our sarup is to stand out from the crowd. So I think remembering what the bana means and those values of Guru Gobind Singh that are embedded in, our, in all of our hearts, right? Whether you're practicing or non-practicing, whether you're Punjabi or Sikh, those values are inside in your heart and you know them, you feel them, right? And that's what you need to reach into to remember mm. that you're worth it you deserve this and mm. you're not alone. And this is a space where we can tell you you're not alone. And mm. we appreciate SickNet supporting us to give us a voice so we can reach to you and say, here, let's talk together. Let's reach out and uplift each other, right? There's a few of the comments that rolled in about how um, men need to support the uplifting of women. Totally. You know, there needs to be that support. And I want to like piggyback a question off that to you, Gurchan. And, and this is something that I have experience with, but I want to ask you first before I okay. share some of my little tales. And it can be comical, it can be whatever you want it to be. But um, how have you dealt with, um, I'm sure you get this, I'm, I'm going to say this because I know this, um, but how have you dealt with the men that slide into your DMs in social media? <laughs> That's a funny one. Um, so I first need to say that I love my husband because he is like the most supportive person ever. And <laughs> he is a person who listens a lot. And he actually gives me so much uh, vision of things, like how to deal with things, right? So uh, when I was engaged with him, um, I still had people sliding on my DM and I would be like, and there was, they will write me in Punjabi, so I have no idea what even they're saying. I don't know. So I will just like forward this thing, like, what is these people saying? And then um, he will just like comically, he wouldn't like get upset or anything. I was just like expressing like, this is happening. And this is like, why does this like, they don't see I have like, I'm engaged. Like they like, they won't respect that. It's okay. Like just ignore them or whatever. So that, that's my first to go. Like, I don't give them my energy because they do not deserve it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. If you come with right intentions and ask me questions about, like, things or, like, you just want to friendly talk, that's right. okay. That's but fine. I, I talk. A lot of followers out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Harassed in yeah, their yeah, media, definitely. social media, like this. Yeah, they're yeah. Hard wearing yeah. Media, and they're beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they have to deal with a lot of... Um, abusive yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's appropriate it really, yeah yeah they will come and say to you like oh you look so pretty and this and that and like i want to marry you that's like the first one i got ever and i have this and i have that and that i think that's nice i have other sisters who have shown me their dms and they're really violent and really like just no um my way to go is I do not give my energy. I do not correspond nothing. I don't say anything. I just like block, ignore. I don't care. If okay. the person is really disrespectful, I will answer. And I say like, you are literally like, what are you doing with your life? Like you call yourself a thing, but you are basically harassing me through the DMs. It's not okay. 
it's not okay. I will just say this and bye. And I wouldn't even let them answer or tell me anything. And if it's really, really bad, and that's because I have a husband, I was just like, look, talk to that person. I don't want to deal with this. Just scare him. I don't know. Talk to him in Punjabi. You know your thing. Right. Yeah, that's that's, that's what I do. You're lucky to have a Punjabi <laughs> husband who can step in and like deal with the problem for yeah. you. But you can call a brother. I don't know. But you can also, yeah, totally. You can do it by yourself. You, I, I uh, the, the most discussion I have with somebody is just telling them, like, what are they doing wrong? What this is not okay? And not engage it anymore and block the person. For right. no, like, under no reason, you should not hide yourself. I, I disagree with this. Many some people have said, like, oh, but your account is public. That's why you have your account public. But why am I going to hide myself? I'm not the one doing wrong. I right. am not the one harassing people. So I'm not going to hide myself. So right. it depends on like um, how you want to react to things or what you want to do with things. My way to go is like if it's nothing very crazy, I just ignore. If ignore. it's too crazy, I say, look, this is grown, don't do this, this and that. And if it's extremely crazy, like a picture of <laughs> you guys know, because that happened, um, I will be like, you know what, this is like way beyond my under, like, no, I'm yeah. not going to do this. Okay. But, so, and this is bad. This is really bad. This is like a, really bad. Like a it's, it's like a it's like the pandemic blood in the, our DMs. Yeah. So, so basically, what you've just described for me is not different to what you experienced as a seven-year-old in an ice cream store, right? Mm. Where without your permission, somebody is um, exposing themselves, basically exposing themselves or making you feel mm -hmm. uncomfortable. For me, they're not different. And the reason that I, I, I brought this in is because we all need to see this differently. We can't say that it's it's all fun and giggles when somebody's just making inappropriate comments to you in your DMs, in your direct messages on social media. That's what DMs means. Um, but it's um, that's okay because it's harmless. It's behind a screen, right? Okay. Um, but it's, it's not okay in person, right? Mm -hmm. You can't have a double standard. Either they're both okay or they're both not okay. Okay? Right. Let's have a straight right. line. Okay? So for me, in my book, they're both not okay. Not okay. And I experience this a lot. I know a lot of Sikh Punjabi women who wear turbans and who do not wear turbans, who get harassed endlessly. And there's one particular type of people that are doing the harassment. And unfortunately to say, they are Punjabi men. Well, I, I have got everything. I have got it like from <laughs> Punjab, <laughs> from Maharashtra, from... <laughs> I'm actually, I'm, I'm kind of pleased to know that it comes from yeah. the spectrum. But for me personally, mm. the people who slide into my DMs, who are throwing marriage proposals, who are making inappropriate comments, who are sending me pictures I haven't asked them for, they are all Punjabi. And oh, that for me is really 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 disappointing mm, mm, because we can't sit here and say oh let's jump together and buddy up and let's fix this problem inside the institutions and we can bring equality and we can talk out about abuse when the men that are doing it are the same men essentially and i'm not saying every single man is the same i'm absolutely not saying that we're not um, generalizing here we're just talking about our experience yes. absolutely thank you but what mm. i'm going to say is that we cannot possibly say re-educate the girls train them to be warriors from the moment that they're born and then if something happens they must have been asking for it right okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, re-educate your boys yep re and, your I boys and yeah. treat them the values of how to look after their women how to respect them and treat them like queens from a young age because if that, those are the values and that's what we're taught mm -hmm. then none of this abuse happening on social yeah. media or in person totally totally a uh, part of like fixing this problem is educating both sides i comment i commend you the other day that i saw this video from um a training course who was being done in one of the countries in africa I, if i don't rem make mistake it was somalia or a country in Africa. Sorry about my bad memory, but the video was teaching um, how it was training actively 
the girls how to say no, how to uh, defend themselves uh, by martial arts and defense and techniques and stuff, and educating them on like their rights and like the rights of their bodies. Mm -hmm. And in the other room, it was the boys. The boys mm -hmm. were also educated on like like women's right and like the rights on their own bodies too, like how to approach a woman and this and that, talking about boundaries and about everything. Mm -hmm. So in the video, I, I, I wish I can share the video with you guys, but I don't remember. In the video said that at the beginning of the class, 70% or 80% of the boys thought that it was okay to touch a girl if she was wearing a miniskirt. What? By the end of the course, that percentage dropped to five. Only 5% 5 of the boys thought it was okay to touch mm -hmm. a girl because she was wearing a skirt. So wow. the key was, yeah, of course, we must train our women, we must train our girls. But also we need to educate the guys. And as one of the comments says, yeah, we, we can do everything ourselves. But if there are not men supporting the cause, or there are not men being trained or that are maybe educated, we're still doing something like fighting, you know, like it's not together. And um, and I don't know, I don't know when in, in history this was lost, but like as far as I know, everybody was trained with the same principles. It, it was. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think the evolution, economical migration, all of those things have you know brought us to where we are. But it's 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 you know we, we have to address what the issue is. And the issue is that they're the same thing. There was very recently, um, I can't remember the name of this beautiful young girl, Punjabi girl, um, who's in Australia, who shared a feed about um, this private WhatsApp group or a chat group amongst boys, like locker room talk almost, um, where they're sharing private conversations um, from girls that they, they're talking to um, and photos as well. So these were images that were sent privately to one individual who then shared it amongst their little locker room chat. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they thought this was funny and they're talking about raping and they're talking about lots of things which they shouldn't have been talking about. When this got exposed, the, the questions that came back and the sort of comments that people were making is that, well, come on, it's harmless conversation. It's not like they went out and actually did anything. It's not it's, like they raped anybody, right? Yeah, it's like what one of Penn was, of Benji's was saying in the comments, it's just normalized. Why yeah. are we normalizing violence? Even saying things is, saying and doing, there is just this much. Absolutely. This much you know, saying mm -hmm. something and doing something. The thing that is horrifying is that we don't see it to be harmful we're saying it's okay because it's just in words but then when it happens and it becomes an action then we're all surprised that oh my god how could this have happened or is she telling the truth did it really happen was it really like that right i think that until we're actually making those changes in how we see it and saying that it's not okay to have those conversations right i'm not in any sort of a group that talks derogatory about any gender and Same. I would not be because, like, that's not a normal thing to do. <laughs> somebody exactly right, like that stuff's not normal, and it's not okay. So, if we say that it's okay on public platforms, we endorse these people and say, "Go out there and do this." Right? We won't be surprised when it happens because it's harmless, mm -hmm. right? Until it happens to somebody that you know, somebody that you love, and that you care about, yep. then it becomes an issue. And yep. I think that like one of those fundamental ground like rules for us is that we are all the same, we are one. And until we actually start to see everybody as one in that ikon card, we're not gonna change this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that step is what's missing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. And uh, I just switched our roles. It's like, I'm answering the questions. <laughs> It's like, okay. What do I do now? <laughs> yeah, I'm not so, asking you questions. It's, no, it's no, it's totally fine because it's something. This is a conversation or a Q and A, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, I wanted to to mention about that that and and going by and tying all this to Siki, Guru 
Guru has tell us so many times that we live in Kali Yug or in an era of craziness, basically, like madness. And Guruji has given us tools to navigate to this Kali Yug. I'm aware that the problem of abuse and all this normalization of abuse in women and kids and all this is a uh, result of this era basically like if you want to talk more spiritually talking it's like it's madness at this time basically guru has teaching has been teaching us how to literally just not involve be strong and defend people who are being like that and there is tons of saki that talk about that when the Mughals uh, took all the women from this little town and then the Sikhs went and take them back and, and take them back to their families, for example. Were the Sikhs doing nothing? No, they were fighting back that system because they were, were, they were being sold, human trafficking, sexual mm -hmm. trafficking, etc. So tying, again, these things to Sikhi, the world is really messed up. We know that. There is a whole industry as one of Benji is saying here, it was a whole industry of porn and stuff that normalized things that we should not be normalized. Mm -hmm. It's very innocent of us to think we're going to change all that. Really rarely is going to happen, but, but we can help. We can do something about it. We can help the people who come and say something or they're looking for refugee and take them and, you know, help mm -hmm. them out. Right. So, so totally, like if we can do our best to educate our own community to go back to that time where, mm -hmm. where an army went and saved women who were taken to be sold and they didn't even touch any hair of those women, where mm -hmm. that go? And I, this, this mm -hmm. was our guru's teaching. Mm -hmm. These was our teachings that he gave, he, they gave to us. So. Totally, like I think we need to go back to understand and educate and train both genders, every yeah. and that, mm -hmm. on how to move forward from that because yep. that's basically like a whole Maya Kali Yuk situation that is taking us away from our real goal, which is we're here to, we're here to connect with Guruji. That's it. Like the rest is just like distraction and craziness. Mm -hmm. and um that's that's the difficult thing is like how do you like how do you navigate through both worlds how do you stay grateful and in grace as well when there's so much turmoil and so much ugliness around us right and the things that we're talking about are not pretty things right they're difficult and they're real and they're they're ugly right so um i I don't think that it's a responsibility of the institution, right? I don't hold Gurdwari accountable. I don't hold the Khalsa Panth accountable. I hold us as individuals accountable. That if this is something that moves you, if this is something that you disagree with, then you have to follow that feeling and put it into an action. Be procreative, pro proactive about it. Sorry, I was going to say, <laughs> don't procreate from this. Um, be, be proactive about this and go out there and make action okay yeah yeah i'm sorry i've got the giggles <laughs> it's okay well yeah this is this is totally like um there are so many issues around the world there are so many issues within the pant there right. are so many issues internally with ourselves so we must pick our battles take our energy and directly into whatever we believe in needs work and do it. There are people there out there who their entire life are feeding the homeless. Yeah. There are people there which their entire life is taking care of all the group of Gurujis that are around, I don't know, UK, restoring them and doing that. There are some people there just taking care of education, educating our youth. Right. And there are people there taking care of families taking care taking care of people who have suffered from abuse mm -hmm. we are so many and there are so many things we can help just do pick whatever you want Absolutely. and start doing it Absolutely. and 
and yeah and go for it and but i think the most important thing is like to remember that if we're in this path and we're this path together ultimately like the main battle or the main help is within us and mm -hmm. how to make ourselves stronger in order to help everybody else and i think guruji teaches this so much he they sorry they tell us that um that being in chardikala it's not just be like fakely happy it's like be strong be there be present so you can serve serve mm -hmm. yourself and serve others mm 